A question I often get asked is, what does your STEM classroom look like? And hey, I have heard you and I have been holding on to this question for a while. Now let me let you in on a little secret. I haven't taken a full video of my classroom with all the things because honestly, when you teach K through five STEM, your classroom is an absolute mess. And I know you wouldn't mind because that's the way it should be in an elementary STEM classroom. But like the good host I am, I cleaned up my space. Well, it was the end of summer and I had no choice, but cleaned up my space and took video of what my elementary STEM classroom setup is. One word of caution when you check out this classroom tour. When I received the K-5 STEM teaching position, I was given a brand new classroom with limited supplies and zero curriculum. And when I mean brand new classroom, it wasn't just brand new to me, it was brand new to the school. So everything that you see in there, the furniture, the layout, the painting on there, the bigger things in that classroom were all funded through a district-wide grant. Along with that, the materials that you might see in the video are things that I built up over the course of five years. So this is just a great way to give you some perspective of what your classroom could look like and some elements that you can add to yours. If you are wondering what specific supplies that you should add in your classroom, go and check out my video for episode five of my elementary STEM coach podcast. And I talk through the types of things that you can add in your room. The episode after that will actually set you up how to manage all of those supplies. I will link those in the description below so you don't have to go and search for it. Also, I do have a free spreadsheet that I put together of all of the supplies that I recommend for this type of space and the amount needed. And also, depending on the type of budget that you have, how much should you spend when it comes to different things when getting started in your space and thinking about long-term goals of what you want to build up to. I'll also do my best in the description linking most of the things that you will see in the video, and that includes the furniture. Again, I'm not exactly sure on all of the brands of the furniture, so I am going to do my best. I didn't get a say of the things, the big things that were purchased in my classroom. They were there when I showed up. So I will definitely do my best when it comes to those things because they are pretty awesome. Also very expensive. Those are kinds of things you would want to write a grant for. All right, so I know that you are ready. The moment you have been waiting for, let's step into my innovation lab. Welcome to the Innovation Lab. There are two entrances into my classroom, one from the hallway and the other being the library. Walking in through these doors, I call it the baby hallway. It's an awkward space, but perfect for storing headphones, computer mice, safety goggles, and tripods. Easy to access year round for all grade levels. The big open space in front of the tables is where kids would go down and sit first thing for the lesson. It's easy for kids to be overwhelmed and overstimulated by a big open room like this one, so that was a routine that I did in K-5. through Here is, This is typically how I had the furniture set up all the time, but I could easily move it since it was mostly on wheels. The entire wall behind me is glass with sliding doors, so if you ever want to know what it's like teaching in a fishbowl, I'm your go-to girl. My desk was this tall table hidden in this awkward corner. I later installed these Lego wall pieces and they were a huge hit. I kept my main makerspace supplies out all year and labeled all the drawers with pictures and words. I'll definitely link those in the description below. The blue wall was great for videos when I wanted to change the background. This green one, while it looks cool, not so much. It had too much yellow in it and it was actually harder to edit. I kept my 3D printers out all year for the kids to see them. These square shelves I would change out quite often. This was home to my robots when they needed to be charged, STEM station supplies, and even STEM related books. These growth mindset quotes I always kept up and referred to them throughout the year, just like the other quotes that you see hanging on the walls. 
The hanging racks have video recording equipment like extra shirts for filming and pop-up green screen tripods. Of course, there was a class set of iPads in the corner that I got to use when students weren't using laptops. This large TV is where I would project lessons every day and connect in my computer wirelessly. These cards stored more makerspace supplies and also kept the cords out of the way and ensured that students didn't bump their heads on the TV. This wall behind it is actually a giant whiteboard sticker, which was pretty fun to have. I did tell the students this is the only wall in the school that you can write on, so don't try it in their classrooms. Functional storage is always tricky in a STEM space. I kept everyday items like crayons, markers, glue sticks, and scissors at kid-friendly heights year-round. The items on the open shelves I would move around based on the unit I was teaching. Other shelves were left empty to store student projects. The closed cabinets housed more expensive materials that I needed out of the way until I taught that particular unit. This was definitely a work in progress, but worth all the time building up these supplies. Thank you for joining me on my K-5 STEM classroom tour. If you're looking for more support in your elementary STEM classroom, pop on by to my podcast, The Elementary STEM Coach, or find me on my website at naomimeredith.com. Talk to you soon.